congratulations on the purchase of your new Craftsman tractor. This video will be an invaluable resource in showing you how to operate, troubleshoot, and care for your new tractor so that you may enjoy its use for many years to come. The tractors used in this video may differ from the one you have purchased, but the systems talked about are the same. Once you have assembled the tractor, but before you operate, make sure that the battery has been properly charged for at least one hour. All tires have the proper air pressure. Not having proper air pressure will cause the deck to cut unevenly. The tires were shipped over inflated. Check that the deck is properly leveled side to side and also front to rear. Check the mower and tractor drive belts. Be sure that they are routed properly around the pulleys and inside all belt keepers. Check the wiring. Make sure that all connections are secure and that the wires are properly clamped in place. Also, get to know your controls. In the operation section of your owner's manual, there is a picture of the tractor with all the controls. Get to know the controls and how each one of them works. It is very important to have the correct oil level in the engine. Fill the tank with fresh, clean, regular unleaded gasoline. The use of leaded gas will increase the carbon and lead deposits, which will reduce the valve life. When storing your tractor after the season, be sure and follow the storage guidelines in the owner's manual. Now, let's run through the operation of your tractor. Push the clutch brake pedal and set the parking brake by lifting the small lever at the bottom right side of the dash. Hold the lever in the engaged position and release the clutch brake pedal. The lever will remain in the engaged position. Put the gear shift lever or motion lever in neutral. Make sure the attachment clutch is in the disengaged position. Some models have a large lever on the right hand side of the dash. This lever should be at the bottom of the slot. Other models will have an electric clutch switch also located on the dash. This switch should be pushed in. Either way, if the clutch is not disengaged, the engine will not start. Now, engage the choke. If you have only one lever that has both the throttle and choke, move it into the choke position. You do this by moving the lever up to fast, then to the right, and up a little more until it stops. If your tractor has a separate throttle and choke control, move the throttle to fast and pull the choke knob all the way out. Then turn the ignition key to start. As the engine starts, a small puff of blue smoke might appear coming out of the exhaust. This is part of normal engine function. Once the engine has started, move the choke control out of the choke position to about half speed. If you have a separate choke, push it in all the way and move the throttle to half speed. To engage the blades, move the attachment clutch lever which is located on the dash up to the engage position. On models with an electric clutch, pull the switch outward to engage the blade. You'll probably hear a small squeaking noise. This is the friction of the belts as they engage the blades. As the RPMs of the engine increase, the belts are designed to flop a small amount. There will also be some vibration when the engine is running slowly. These things are normal and there should be no cause for concern. To select the height of cut, push the button on top of the lift lever and move it forward to lower the deck or pull it back to raise it. Some models have six positions where you simply select the cutting height, while others have an infinite height adjustment system. With this system, the height adjustment of the mower is raised or lowered by turning the height adjustment knob, located just under the left-hand side of the dash. In this case, when the deck is lowered, it will always go to the same height until readjusted. Now, to begin cutting the grass. First, make sure the throttle control is at half speed. Then engage the blades. By doing this at half throttle, you will prolong the belt life. If you have a gear drive unit, push the clutch pedal all the way down, select the gear desired, then release the clutch slowly. If you have a hydro, first make sure that the bypass valve is in the run position. The bypass valve is at the rear of the tractor. The tractor is in the run position when the clip is in the hole closest to the head of the pin. Then move the motion lever forward for forward motion and backward for reverse. 
If you have a garden tractor, make sure that the high-low shift lever on the side of the tractor is in either high or low range. If this lever is not in gear, the tractor will not move. The most desirable speeds for mowing are the middle gears. Top speed is usually used for transporting. Once the tractor has begun to move, slide the throttle control to full throttle. Do not use the throttle control to control your ground speed. Then, lower the deck to the desired height of cut. If you're going too fast, shift to a lower gear. If the engine tends to bog down or lose power, try slowing the tractor down or raising the mower deck. The grass should be dispersed evenly across the lawn. For your added safety, your tractor has been equipped with an operator presence system. This system shuts the engine down if you try to get off the tractor while the blades are still engaged. On some models, the blades must be disengaged and the parking brake must be set or the engine will shut off when you leave the seat. If this happens, remember you must disengage the blades before your tractor will restart. Now let's talk about mulching. When mulching, it's very important to cut only one-third of the grass off. For instance, if the grass is six inches high, only cut two inches off. This will give the deck a chance to cut and hide the grass. The grass must be dry, and the underside of the deck should be clean for mulching to work properly. Trying to mulch wet grass will result in the grass not being hidden properly. This will also happen if too much grass is being mulched. If this happens, raise the deck and make sure that the grass is dry. Remember, use the one-third rule. Cut only a third of the grass off at a time. As with mulching, the best condition for grass to be bagged is when it's dry. Under normal conditions, you can bag at the same speed as if you were dispersing the grass. Remember, it's normal for the left-hand bag to fill before the right-hand bag. If the chute becomes plugged, you must stop the mower, shut the engine off, remove the spark plug wires, remove the chute, and clean it out. Then reattach the chute to the mower. Make sure to reattach the spark plug wires. If plugging becomes a problem, either slow the ground speed down or raise the height of cut. The FBI, or full bag indicator, will tell you when the bags are full. As the bags fill, the wheel spins. The fuller the bags, the faster it spins. Once the wheel has stopped spinning, the bags are full. But the easiest way to use the FBI is while the wheel is spinning very quickly, stop and empty the bags. This way you'll never have to clean the chute area out. To stop the blades, reduce the throttle to half speed. Move the attachment clutch lever on the dash up and to the left and then down. With models that have an electric clutch, push the switch in to disengage the blades. To stop your tractor, push the clutch brake pedal all the way down. With the throttle control at half speed, move the gear shift lever to neutral and set the parking brake. Again, on some models you must engage the parking brake before you get off or the engine will shut down. Finally, turn the ignition key to off. By following these easy starting and stopping instructions, you will benefit from many hours of dependable use from your tractor. If your tractor will not start, was the clutch brake pedal pushed down? Is the attachment clutch lever or switch in the off position? Is there fuel in the gas tank? Is the air filter dirty? If so, clean or replace it. Is the battery weak or dead? If so, recharge or replace it. Keep the battery fluid up to the bottom of the vent wells. Remember, all batteries will discharge if left sitting for long periods of time. It's okay to charge the battery with a standard 12 volt automotive type charger.
Are you experiencing a loss of power? You may be trying to cut too much grass too quickly. To correct this, try raising the cutting deck or slowing the ground speed. The choke may be partially engaged. Disengage the choke control fully. If you are experiencing an uneven cut, you may have worn or bent blades. Replace the blades. The engine speed may be too slow. Increase the throttle to full. The mower deck may not be level. Re-level the deck. The mower deck vent holes may be plugged. Disconnect the spark plug wires and clean the debris from the mandrels and vent holes around the mandrels. The blade mandrel may be bent. Repair or replace. The tire pressure may be low or uneven. Check the pressure and adjust it accordingly. You may be traveling too fast. Shift to a lower speed. You may have a worn mower drive belt Replace the belt. The grass may be wet. Wait for it to dry. To keep your tractor in good working order, proper care and maintenance is essential. Sears has made every effort to supply you with the highest quality lawn or garden tractor available. We hope that this video has been helpful. We're confident that with the proper care, maintenance, and operation of your new tractor, you'll be able to enjoy its use for many years to come. If you need assistance or have any questions concerning your new Craftsman tractor, please call our customer assistance hotline at 1-800-659-5917.